In today's video, we'll go through the differences between folate, folic acid, folinic acid, and methylfolate, and find out which one's the best one to take. Let's get into it. Folate is a natural form of vitamin B9 found in foods such as leafy greens, legumes, fresh fruits and eggs. Having correct folate levels in the body is important for DNA synthesis and repair, formation of healthy red blood cells and it's particularly important for pregnant women to prevent birth defects. Dietary folate gets metabolised in the gut to its active form 5-MTHF, more commonly known as methylfolate. Folic acid is the synthetic oxidized form of vitamin B9. It is the form often used in supplements and fortified foods as it is highly stable and has a high absorption rate. About 85 to 95% of it gets absorbed as opposed to folate which only about 50% gets absorbed. It's cheap to manufacture therefore is usually cheap to buy. Folic acid gets converted to the active form methylfolate in the liver and the digestive system. In order to do this it goes through multiple steps including being broken down by dihydrofolate reductase and it also depends on the enzyme MTHFR which we'll discuss later. DHFR activity varies from person to person. Not everyone can efficiently convert folic acid to its active form. Folinic acid, also known as leucovorin or calcium folinate, bypasses a lot of the steps that are needed in the metabolism process of folic acid. It doesn't need to be broken down by DHFR, which is an important point if you're on medications that interfere with DHFR. Folinic acid is commonly used as a rescue medication for methotrexate toxicity. It is also used in various cancer treatments to help a cancer medication called 5 fluorouracil work better. Bioavailability of folinic acid is 92%. It still needs to be broken down by the MTHFR enzyme. People who have genetic polymorphisms of the MTHFR enzyme may not be able to metabolize the folic acid and folinic acid as well, leading to reduced conversion rates. About 40 to 60% of people have genetic polymorphisms of this enzyme. Methylfolate, also known as L-methylfolate, MTHF or 5-MTHF, which stands for 5-methyltetrahydrofolate, is the active form of vitamin B9. It doesn't need to be broken down and can be used immediately by the body. Studies have found that methylfolate and folic acid are similar in bioavailability and methylfolate is at least as good at improving folate levels in the body compared to folic acid. There are a few advantages of using methylfolate over folic acid. Firstly, if you have any genetic polymorphisms of the MTHFR enzyme, then methylfolate is the form you need to be using as it doesn't need to be broken down by the MTHFR enzyme. Secondly, methylfolate reduces the potential of masking the hematological symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency. Thirdly, there may be less chance of interaction with medications that inhibit DHFR. Here are a list of medications that may inhibit DHFR. And lastly, there have been increasing concerns that unconverted folic acid in the body can potentially lead to harmful effects such as age-related mental decline and increased risk of cancer. This isn't a risk if you take methylfolate. The big disadvantage of methylfolate is it is usually much more expensive. If you've been recommended to take folic acid as a supplement, you may be wondering which one to take. If you have any genetic polymorphisms of the MTHFR enzyme, which you can find out from a gene test, then take the methylfolate form. If price is a factor and you don't have the genetic polymorphisms of the MTHFR enzyme, then stick with folic acid as it is much cheaper. Now, if you don't know if you've got a genetic polymorphism of the MTHFR enzyme and price doesn't matter to you, then take methylfolate. Now, remember many countries fortify foods such as breads with folic acid, so you generally don't need to take it as a supplement unless recommended by the doctor or if you're a female planning for pregnancy. It's always a good idea to speak to a health professional first before starting any folic acid supplements. So that comes to the end of the video. If you found anything useful in this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!